Daily in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Okay, so the new WBC rankings have been released. Well, a couple of days ago, actually. But there's some interesting points in this one where, for example, with the WBC, of course, and listen, let's go through the list first and foremost. Tyson Fury, of course, is the champion. The interim champion is, of course, Alexander Pavek. But, of course, he's got his rematch with Dillian White on November the 21st. Hopefully, that will change, right? Um, number one, Deontay Wilder, former champion, of course. Alexander Usyk, number two. Luis Ortiz, number three. Andy Ruiz Jr., number four. Five, Dillian White. Six, Joseph Parker. Seven, Darren Dubois. Eight, Oscar Rivas. Nine, Philip Herkovich. Ten, Michael Hunter. Eleven, Joe Joyce. Twelve, Derek Chisora. Thirteen, Charles Martin. Fourteen, FA Jagba. And number 15, Ajik Cabio. Now, I think overall, as a top 15, that's not bad. It's not brilliant, but... You're never going to please everybody, okay? And we fully understand that. But for me, a couple of points that I'd like to highlight, let's do with the obvious one. Of course, Dillian White. Um, he takes one loss after he's dominating that fight. He gets hit with one punch and he gets dropped, not only from number one and the interim championship status, but down to number five. Which is kind of weird when... I mean, listen, you can drop him down to number 15. It doesn't really make any difference. He's got his rematch with Pavek. If he wins that... Uh, and then he's back up there as the interim world champion again. So it is what it is. But I think just for clarity, when you look at it, the bias with WBC is the fact that Luis Ortiz, who's number three, has been knocked out twice in his last five fights. So why is he number three? And again, he hasn't fought or beat anybody of any credibility. Dylan White has. He's taken one loss with a very, very good resume. So why is it that Luis Ortiz is number three, but Dillian White is number five? That makes very little to no sense whatsoever. Alexander Usyk, I think that's a wasted um, ranking because he's WBO mandatory. So he's not going to be fighting for the WBC anytime soon. So what's the point in even ranking him? Let's be honest about it. But again, he's only had one fight at heavyweight, but of course he was former undisputed cruiserweight champion as well. Um, number seven, Daniel Dubois, that's a high ranking. Number seven. Um, I mean, if he was to defeat Joe Joyce, certainly a top 15, I think, would be justified. But I think a number seven is a bit too high. I mean, when I do the WBO, we're going to talk a little bit more about that one. Um, some other good fighters as well. I mean, Oscar Rivas is number eight. Again, Oscar Rivas, last time he fought, unless I'm mistaken, was when he lost to Dillian White. Unless he's had another fight since, I don't know. And who against? I don't know. But... Quite why he's as high as what he is, I don't know, considering that when he fought Dillian White, he was there or thereabouts, this kind of position. Then he went up a few levels after losing to Dillian White, and now he's tending to drop back down a bit. Maybe that's some inactivity, I don't know. Filip Herkovic, again, he's looking real, real good. But again, much like Dan Dubois, he's still a prospect. Yes, he's beaten a couple of okay opponents, but none of them at the top end. OK, um, Joe Joyce, again, similar situation with uh, Daniel Dubois and Filip Herkovic. Derek Chisora, of course, he could be fighting um, Alexander Usyk. But again, Derek Chisora, should he be t um, a top 15? I mean, potentially, why not? I mean, I think Derek Chisora can beat most of these people on his day. A lot of it's down to Derek Chisora, let's be honest, as to what Derek Chisora turns up. Charles Martin, number 13. Do me a favour. Um, F.A. Jagba, again, just like Daniel Dubois. Um, and Joe Joyce, etc. Still a prospect. I think it's a bit too soon to be ranking these guys that high. And of course, former European heavyweight champion, Ajit Kabiel, still undefeated. And of course, now with top rank. So that's the top 15. Um, obviously, Wilder makes a lot of difference what position he is. Again, much like Dylan White, it doesn't really matter what position they are. Because Wilder, he's going to get his opportunity to become a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. When he takes on Tyson Fury. I think it's unli unlikely that he's going to beat Fury. But hey... He's always got a puncher's chance. And of course, with uh, Dillian White, he's got that rematch with Povetkin. So them two positions, it doesn't really matter where they are because they're going to have their opportunity next fight anyway. But it's the rest of them. Um, Joseph Parker, um, I think Parker, that's not a bad position, but I think Parker, um, he, I think he does need to step up the competition a little bit now. Obviously, he's, um, he's going to take on Junior Farb for, of what we're hearing at least anyway. So it's not a bad position for him, but... If and should he beat Junior Far, let's see him in with one of these top 15. And again, let's see Filip Herkovic in with the top 15 as well. In fact, his next fight, which I believe is in Spain or something like that. Um, 
again, it's against somebody that most people haven't heard of. So let's see Filip Perkovic start making a bit of an assault on some of these guys, um, along with Charles Martin as well. Let's see him in with a Ashi Cabrio. Let's see him in with a Michael Hunter. Again, what's happening with Michael Hunter? Michael Hunter has done very, very well at heavyweight so far. But Michael Hunter, he has been risking it. Okay, but I think some of the other guys need to really start stepping it up. Anyway, that's the WBC rankings. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all in the next video.